Hello Brighties. In this video, I will discuss the review of related literature, its purpose, as well as the steps in conducting it. Review of related literature is the process of compiling, classifying, and evaluating what other researchers have written on a certain topic. It can be a partial component of a research undertaking, but it can also stand alone as a self-contained review of writing on a subject. What is its purpose? It helps place the work being viewed in its context, describe the relationship of each work to the research being undertaken, identify new ways to interpret various gaps based from previous researchers, solve conflicts among seemingly contradictory previous studies, identify topics that are subjects of previous studies, and point out new topics for a study. The review of related literature is a crucial aspect of research and serves the following purposes. 1. It helps in placing the work being reviewed in its context. 2. It describes the relationship of each work to the research being undertaken. 3. It identifies new ways to interpret and shed light to various gaps based from previous researches. 4. It helps in solving conflicts among seemingly contradictory previous studies. 5. It identifies the areas that are subject to a prior study to prevent duplication of efforts. And six, it points to another research undertaking. The review of related literature is a systematic process composed of three steps. These are: first, finding relevant materials. It is the researcher's priority to enrich his or her work by reading literatures containing important data relative to his problem in order to fully comprehend the variables being studied. The library is a good source for reference materials such as journals, textbooks, reference books, abstract of theses, and dissertations. The internet can also be a source, but remember that not all you see and read in the internet are reliable. Second, actual reading. After the pre-selection process, the researcher must thoroughly critique the contents of the materials. Critiquing involves asking questions which at this stage should focus on the variables. Lastly, note-taking. One of the characteristics of a good researcher is being systematic. Note-taking helps to save time and effort, that is why researchers must establish this system. What is note-taking? It is a useful process, especially when the researcher is already synthesizing and compiling ideas from the different references. It also facilitates consolidation of the literature gathered. Why is it important to take notes? The researcher must take notes where he or she input only the important data in his or her own words. Using index card can be of good help in note taking, and the titles of the journals read should also be indicated in the index cards. There are three strategies in reading literature. These are one, previewing. It is the process of reading to get a general idea of things to look for in the text. Systematic skimming is done here. Two, highlighting. It is done by physically marking the text to identify key details and to note the relationships among ideas. What do researchers highlight? A, the most important ideas are underlined. B words, phrases, or images that need further analysis should be boxed. C question marks are written beside confusing passages, unfamiliar references, or words that need to be defined. D related words, ideas, or images are in circle. Lines can be drawn to show their connection. E incidents that occur in sequence are numbered. F key portions of the text should be set off with a vertical line in the margin. G. Stars are placed beside particularly important ideas. Three. Annotating. It is the recording of the reader's reactions as marginal notes. In here, one defines new words, identify allusions, add patterns of language or imagery, summarize plot relationships, suggest characters' motivation, or record questions that occur in reading. Here are guidelines on how to annotate during and after reading. During reading. A. Ask questions. Items which are confusing or unclear must be noted. B. React to what you read. Contents that elicited a reaction from you should be noted. One's reaction to the text should be recorded for future reference. C. Give an opinion. Ideas that are liked or disagreed with should be noted. D. Locate important passages. Important quotes. Ideas worth remembering. 
or big ideas, which will serve as foundations to one's writing should be noted. E. Make connections. Information that reminds one of a past experience or important events in his or her life should be recorded. F. Define new words. When confronted with an unfamiliar word, consult a dictionary or search for its meaning online. G. Track themes. Recurring themes in the text should be noted. Doing so will help one understand the messages that the text is trying to express. Annotation after reading. A. Give a title to the chapters or article sections. Some books and articles already have chapter titles. If they do not, they should be given relevant titles after finishing the reading on that section. This aids in organizing the main idea of that particular section. B. Summarize the material read. In the empty space at the end of that page, the article must be rewritten, noting the essential points and using only a couple of sentences. C. Respond to the reading itself. Sometimes, a summary is not enough. One might want to comment on what he or she just read, give an opinion about a concept, or complain about the author's insight or viewpoint. D. Make a prediction. Predicting is a great thinking exercise and the best time to do so is immediately after finishing one section and before beginning the next one. That will be all. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.